Okay. All right. Well, uh, welcome to Zycon's Innovation Center here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, hope that you're all having a great show so far. I know it's the last day. Hopefully it's been very productive for everyone there in Atlanta. Uh, today at the Zycon Innovation Center, we're going to be showing off the Zycon CX500 dry toner digital production press. So just a little bit about the CX500. This is a five color dry toner press. Uh, the toner that we use is a uh, just a polymer, so therefore it is also a food safe press. The toner itself can be used in uh, applications where you may have direct food contact. One of those applications that we uh, like to feature are cups. Um, it's a 1200 by 3600 DPI engine, and it can run at a top speed of just under 100 feet per minute or 30 meters per minute. Today we're running a uh, pressure sensitive label a substrate. This is a paper label. And we're showing a very unique application that can be done uh, on the Zycon. Now the Zycon features what we call full rotary technology. So we have basically an unlimited uh, frame size or print length. We can put in a file of up to 150 feet and be able to print that in one pass. And we can actually stack multiple of those together to be able to get uh, unlimited print length. And what we're showing today is a product that is part of our X800 workflow called Verilane. So as you may see, we have uh, 20, we're running a 20 inch wide web. And uh, on our rewinder, we are slitting that into two uh, two separate webs, but you'll notice that the print size or the repeat size of the labels that we're printing are different on both sides of the web. This is a feature of Verlane and of X800 that allows us to take two completely separate layouts that do not have a common repeat size, and we can use X800's Verlane feature to uh, make the most uh, most use of that 20 inch wide web, giving us the maximum productivity of the CX500 when we're running a 20 inch web. So the uh, example that we're running today is a, um, a spirit bottle label. And this would be an example of running a label that while they're common to the product, uh, one may be a, a label for a bottle and one may be labeling for packaging. So again, this is really, um, uh, this is really uh, a, a, an a, a extreme example of variable data is what I wanted to say in that again, uh, because Zycon has developed the X800 RIP that controls our CX500, both the software and the hardware are tightly integrated, allowing us to do what you see right here where we're running again, two completely different uh, repeat sizes on one web, slitting those at our rewinder so that those can then be taken offline for finishing. But again, we're making the most use of the web in being as productive as we can with this job. So again, this is a uh, 1200 by 3600 DPI engine. We're currently running it on a white media. So we're only using uh, four colors, our process colors, but it is a five color engine. So we do have the ability uh, to put a white toner in the engine if we're going to be running on, say, a clear media. Uh, we also have the ability to swap out that fifth color with a spot color. So we do have gamut expansion colors. If you're trying to hit a specific brand color, then we can also put in a uh, red, a green, a blue, or an orange. And we also have security toners such as a clear that fluoresces under UV light so that you can uh, do security applications that require that. And because it is a 1200 3600 DPI engine, doing things such as microtex or guilloches are also things that you can do natively in your artwork. Um, again, just for additional security features. Um, now I'd like to show you a little bit about the, uh, the actual equipment setup that we have here. So what you're seeing right now is our Zycon CX500 print engine, and that is being fed by the Zycon PMS uh, in large integrated unwinder. So at the very back of the engine here, we have our integrated unwinder. And this is a, um, 
Unwinder that does speak directly to the software that we'll take a look at in just a little bit. So the operator always knows what's happening back here, how much media is left. And if the operator needs to do certain procedures like doing a splice to change the media or to put on a new role, that can all be handled in software and has guidance to help new operators uh, do exactly the right steps to get a new role on. The Jumbo Unwinder can handle a roll of up to 60 inches in diameter and up to 1800 pounds. And there's a lift on the back of that to make roll swaps very easy, as well as a splice table right here so that you can easily um, change out rolls, attach one to the other and be up and running in no time. Now the unwinder feeds into the CX500 dry toner press. It first goes through an active aligner. This active aligner is going to look at the edge of the web and make sure that the web is consistently going in the same position in web direction so that when we do finish labels on the other side, that they will be um, always in the same place registration wise so that we have no problems during finishing. After the unwinder, it feeds in through our print medium conditioning unit. And one of the other things I'd like to mention is with the Zycon dry toner technology, we don't require any special top coats uh, specific to Zycon technology. Generally, most of the medias we run here in the Innovation Center have just a typical flexo top coating. And we don't, again, like I said, we don't have any specific top coat needs for this. Most flexo top coats work great. So you don't have to have multiple medias. You know, Maybe if you're running a traditional shop and a digital shop, you can generally share medias between two engines. After we go in through the print medium conditioning unit, uh, we feed into the press itself. So as I was mentioning, we are running a four color job right now. And if we take a look inside, you can see the dosing units that feed toner to the print engine. The web feeds up, so it's going from the bottom to the top here. So the first thing that it sees is our white toner unit. We're not using that right now because we are running white media. If I wanted to swap this out for a spot color, I could easily do that. It takes about 10 minutes to uh, change out the toner and the developing unit and put in a new color. And then it fee uh, the, the press will then image yellow, cyan, magenta, and black. Um, if the press does need toner at any point during a run, a couple of things will happen. First off, the flashing yellow or flashing white light you see up there will turn yellow so that at a distance, the operator knows the press is looking for attention. So generally when it's looking for attention, it's gonna to want toner. And what will also happen then is on the side here, this panel will light up with the uh, toner requested. So if it's looking for magenta, it will show an M. All I have to do at that point is grab a bottle of toner um, shake it up and put it in the dosing unit. And I can do that while the engines is, engine is running to make sure that we maintain as mo much productivity uh, on the press as we can. So I never need to stop the engine to fill toner. I can keep that run going for as long as I have media. After we have imaged, then we'll move into the fusing section. So on our CX500 simplex engine, uh, we are using a uh, heat and pressure to fuse the toner to the media itself. After the uh, toner has been fused to the media, we do go through a spectrophotometer, which is a standard feature of Zycon engines. So the spectrophotometer is going to read a control strip. And what that's going to allow us to do is uh, it's going to help us maintain densities and maintain linearization uh, of the print from the beginning to the end of our run. So what that means is that as we're printing, what we started printing and what we end printing are going to be uh, identical in color to make sure there are no variances between the front to the end of the run, also from run to run. So if we come and reprint this uh, months down the line, we should be able to repeat that color very easily. From there, because we are using a roll fed engine, we do also have the ability to put other finishing devices in line. So depending on what the production environment for your shop is, uh, you can either go just to a uh, rewinder as we're doing here, but we also offer things such as inline finishing or varnishing. We offer a Zycon web varnishing module if you'd like to put down uh, uh, aqueous or UV coating in line to have labels that are ready to go for finishing. Here with our dual core rewinder, 
We additionally here have another active aligner. That's going to make sure that as we feed into our slitting station, that the uh, web will not uh, vary in direction. And then, like I said, because we're running the very lane feature of X800 today, um, we are slitting this web into two lanes so that, uh, again, those two completely different repeat labels can then be uh, taken to finishing. And we're getting the maximum productivity out of the CX500 when we're running a 20-inch web. The next thing that I want to give you a little bit of an overview of is the software that the operator will use to control the CX500. This consists of two pieces of software that you'll see right here. On the left-hand side is MyPress. This is going to be the operator's interface to the engine. And on the right-hand side is X800. Now, X800 is the uh, software that's doing all the magic to make this uh, non-standard repeat size work. And we'll show you how that happens in just a second here. Let me uh, show you my screen. So the first thing that I'm going to show you right now is MyPress. So MyPress, as I mentioned, is the um, operator's interface to the engine. At a glance, I can see right away uh, anything that I might need to know about how my engine is doing and how the print is doing. So for example, I talked about that integrated unwinder. That's up here where I can see how much media I actually have left on the roll. And that'll help me determine if I'm going to have enough media for a run or if I'm going to have to change out at some point. I can also see the status of my uh, toner. If I'm full of toner or if a uh, dosing unit is looking for toner, it will let me he know here and give me a warning. Uh, under the cruise control section, this is that spectrophotometer. So if I am running those control steps during my uh, print run, this will at a glance let me know if everything is OK. So today, it's letting me know that, hey, it's happy. I've done my daily maintenance. And you can see I get a green star there. The same thing will happen if I'm running those control strips. I will get a green star letting me know that my densities and my linearization are okay. If something is off, that color will change. And then again, I can see right away from a distance, uh, maybe something's wrong that I need to take a look at. Finally, I also have a print quality section here, and that's just adjustments I can make on the fly if I need, if I'm seeing any issues with my print quality. The heart of a Zycon engine, though, is X800. So this is our workflow or our RIP. So this is how we're going to get our files into the engine and get them ready for print. Uh, it is a hot folder-based workflow. So you're going to take your PDF, is generally what we're seeing, drop that in a folder on the network or on this engine. And then the uh, X800 will process that uh, based on the job ticket that's associated with that folder. As we're talking a little bit about Verilane, I want to show you how I did that. So what Verilane is doing is it's taking two separate jobs, and it's going to combine them into a master job that can then be specified for the width of your web. So here you can see I have the one front label of this uh, gin label. And then you can also see here I have the packaging label, that black and white label that we're running on the other side of the web. So these two jobs were brought in from a single PDF. So you can see my one-up PDF shown at the top of the screen here. And at the bottom is my layout. Now that layout is going to be the layout for die cutting. And I am doing that entire die cut layout in X800 as well. So I'm taking that input file. I'm stepping and repeating it. My die plate is a two by two uh, matrix. And then I'm also putting my gutters in there as well. So I have quarter inch gutters for that die plate. And finally, I'm also putting on there my eye marks. So you can see using X800 and our metadata module, which allows us to put in variable data, uh, sequential numbering, or things like eye marks, I'm also including the eye marks uh, right in that layout. I don't have to do any of that in prepress. All I have to give X800 is the input file. So I have both of these layouts here. I've specified how I want them to be laid out based on my die plate. I've told them how much web I have. And then using, Ver uh, using Verilane in X800, I can then take those two files, and as we see here, I can combine them into one master job, and that's what I was printing on the Zycon itself. So you saw it coming out. The other great thing about MyPress is our inspector feature. So 
once I have those files combined, I can then come in here and make sure that everything is just how I need it to be. Make sure that my spacing is right, make sure my eye marks are there, and just kind of take a quick look at the pages to see how those are running. So that's the brief overview of the Zycon CX500 and the software that we use to run it, both MyPress and X800. Hopefully, uh, you know, I appreciate you stopping by and, and watching the demo. If there's any questions, feel free to ask me or any of the associates on the booth there will be able to uh, answer any of the questions you might have. And I hope that the rest of your day there at Printing United goes well. Any questions or? Hold on, Ryan. All right. Uh, no questions at this time, Ryan. Good job. All Thank right. You. Thanks, Mike. Take care. All right. Have a great day.